Yehuda Tzion, in the 1980s, he plotted to actually blow up the Dome of the Rock. All right, so his plan, he actually amassed explosives and got architectural plans and plotted it out. And the idea was that he was, it was stopped in time. Israeli forces managed to catch him in time. But his idea was to explode the Dome of the Rock. Now, obviously, this has, uh, you know, great meaning for the Muslim world. This is considered the third most important shrine in Muslimdom, but it's also a very potent symbol of Palestinian nationalism, even for non-Muslim Palestinians, because it's like the last little piece of Palestine in which Palestinians have some measure of autonomy there. In any case, it's also the most beautiful piece of architecture in the whole country, and he wants to explode it, or did at that time. Now he, he, he has a different view of it. I mean, he's still, he, he did serve in jail for about five years, that was back in the day, now he's out, and now he's back on the mount, next to the Dome of the Rock. Once again, what's he doing there now? Well, he realizes that you know, he's in the limelight a bit much, so he can't himself carry out those explosive um, plans, but, but what he does is he hopes to convince enough Israeli Jews to, to demand that the government do so. And so he's one of the leaders of the Templar movement. He, uh, pictured here, gets sheep. And his idea is he doesn't want Jewish people to pray to God anymore. He doesn't want them to you know, supplicate to Yahweh, to Jehovah, and offer their prayers up. He wants them instead to revert, to turn time back 2,000 years. He wants Jews instead to sacrifice animals to Yahweh. These are photographs that I and my colleague Dan Cohen took. Um, so this is Yehuda Etzion being helped by an Israeli police officer hold down this, and, and they conduct these rituals now every year on Passover. And the idea is that they'll be the vanguard, they'll be the first to do so, but they are demanding that this become the national religious expression. And not only that they sacrifice animals instead of praying to God, but that they do so on the Temple Mount, on the Haram al-Sharif. So the idea is where that Dome of the Rock is now, that's where they would build a Jewish temple slash abattoir, where they would not just slaughter one or two animals, but 10,000 or more in a day on a Jewish holiday, to the point where in the scriptures it says, praised be the priests in the temples who were up to their knees in blood. There's actually grooves in the ground still in Haram al-Sharif where you can see where the blood drained. This is how you know, Israelite people worshipped Yahweh 2,000 years ago. They want to go back to it. They, don't, they want people not to pray but to have an intermediary to go to God. For you know, Jewish people to give offerings through the priests and for the priests to conduct these sacrifices. And only if you belong to the proper bloodline can you be one of these chosen priests. This is their vision. Now... Again, this isn't just a fantasy of what happened uh, 2,000 years ago. They're actually doing this. They're actually conducting these rituals with all the garments and, and instruments. And now they're even doing it right outside Al-Aqsa itself. That's how close they're getting. And um, their goal, of course, is not to do it close to Al-Aqsa, but to do it on Al-Aqsa for, for the Dome of the Rock to be just demolished and for this temple to be built on its ruins. That's the plan. And this is Israel Ariel. This is the chief rabbi of the Templar movement. Now, who is this man, Israel Ariel, that uh, is the chief rabbi of the Templar movement? Now, 30 years ago, oh, first of all, I should just point out that he has literally called not only to ethnically cleanse Israel, but the entire Middle East. If you can imagine, he wants wars of conquering, expansion. He says, and again, this is all online. I recorded it, uploaded it. It's there for anyone to hear. Unfortunately, me and my partner, Dan Cohen, were the only journalists who cared to listen. But these are public events. I'm not sitting behind a computer saying what I think because I read it somewhere. I'm going there down to the events itself and recording these people saying these things. Okay, so make no mistake about it. He says, we record him saying, we will conquer Iraq, Turkey. We will get to Iran too. The mosques and the Christian spires and their crosses come down. 
in every place we conquer. And if not, you kill all of their males by sword. You leave only the women. So this is his vision for not just greater Israel, but grander Israel for you know, total, domi total domination of the region. Now, it's very obvious that these views are extremist. Okay? And in fact, 30 years ago, they were considered extremist, even by Israeli standards. This man, Israel Ariel, 30 years ago, he ran for parliament. He was actually number two on which party's list? The list of Mayor Kahana. Okay, a political party that was ruled illegal by the Israeli parliament because even they were dis even all the other parties were disgusted by its racism. It was so blatantly racist that the government put, you know, said, you are beyond the pale. You're too racist for our political system. And they, they made them illegal. Um, but, you know, if 30 years ago he was too racist for the parliament, today he's just right. Okay, another photograph I took of, is, uh, you know, being given a standing ovation in the Israeli parliament, in the Knesset. And this man is now considered, you know, uh, someone who's, you know, someone to revere. He even received uh, the war, the Pras Yerushalayim, the Jerusalem Prize from the mayor of Jerusalem, Mir Barkat. So this is how far the Israeli political system has shifted in recent decades, from too far gone to just right, just racist enough for our taste.